Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo and we make sewing patterns for bag makers. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna be making the Yarn Bomber Project Tote. So as you can probably tell, this comes in two different exterior designs. So the pattern includes this horizontal design and also this vertical design. So this pattern, the bag is actually designed by Amy Hutton of Bed Hog Shop. You can check her out on Instagram. And she has very kindly let us turn this into a sewing pattern. She has made a lot of these bags over the years and they are absolutely stunning. So definitely check out her Instagram feed for some inspiration. You can also get some more inspiration for what fabrics to use and what colors to choose by looking at our tester photos, which are available on the web listing at country, countrycowdesigns.com. So in this tutorial, we are gonna be making this horizontal version. This is a beginner friendly pattern and it is originally designed as a craft bag. So a project tote, which means you can use it for crafts such as crocheting or knitting. That's why it very handily folds down like this. So on the inside, we have got lots and lots of pockets. So pockets for crochet hooks, knitting needles, that kind of thing, loads of room for your yarn. It's even got a little yarn feed for your yarn to go through. It's a really practical bag for a craft bag, so it's perfect for that. But let's be honest, it's also great for loads of other things. We use this one as our beach tote, which is great for holding your shoes when you're just going for a little paddle. And the bag carries so much, it's just got a lot of uses. So let us know in the comments what you decide to use your bag for. If you want to sew along with me, you can grab the pattern from countrycowdesigns.com. Alternatively, you can just watch the video and see how the bag is made. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments and I hope you enjoy this video tutorial. Step one of the pattern is preparation. So once you've decided whether you're making the horizontal or the vertical style, you can get started with this. So you want to get all your pattern pieces cut out. So you can see here that I've already done mine. And for the exterior, I have this canvas for the top, or it's a very lightweight canvas. And then I have cork for the bottom. Make sure that you interface it according to the cutting chart. So you'll notice there's like a corner of interfacing cut out. This is just really, really good for giving a neat finish to the bag. Um, so I've got my zip, I've got my hardware, I've got my straps cut out because we're making the horizontal version. So I've got the webbing as well as the accents. And then for my lining, I've got this striped fabric. And lastly, for my stabilizer, I've got my thermalam. So once all your pattern pieces are ready, you can get started with step two. Step two is the exterior panels. If you're making the vertical version, you just need to follow the instructions on page six of the pattern. But we're gonna make the horizontal version. So for this step, we have our two handle accents we have our two webbing grab handles and our two exterior top pieces. So I'm just gonna move those to the side for the moment. We also have our exterior bottom pieces and all of our stabilizers. So what we're gonna do on all of these pieces, just the bottom stabilizers. So let's get rid of those top ones. So our two bottom stabilizers and our two exterior bottoms. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a square out of the bottom. So the size instructions are on the pattern on page seven. So I'm just gonna cut the squares out of each piece. Okay, so once you've got your squares cut out, you wanna hold back one of these because we're gonna use it for the zip tail later on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our exterior pieces over and on each one, we're gonna fuse a stabilizer. So you want it to be five eighths of an inch up from the bottom and five eighths of an inch in from each side. And I'm just gonna take that over to the iron and fuse those together. So your stabilizer should now be fused to your bottom pieces. And you wanna do the same thing with the top pieces as well. And again, they're gonna be five eighths of an inch up from the bottom, five eighths of an inch in from each side. So set those aside just for a moment and we're gonna start on the handles. So you should have your two handle accent pieces. On both of these, you want to draw a line down the center of the wrong side of the fabric. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold 
the two edges into that line and stick it in the center. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to do that. So now you want to grab one of your pieces of webbing. And this is the side where the join is. So what we wanna do is we wanna put this onto the webbing so that that side's gonna be hidden. And you want your accent to be nice and centered like that so there's an even gap on each side. Now if you want to, you could glue this in place or stick it or you may just wanna clip it. Totally up to you. I'm gonna use a little bit more double-sided tape to hold it in place on the webbing. What we're now gonna do is sew the long edges of the handle accent so that these are sewn together. What you can do, if you've got quite a stretchy fabric, you could do it with the webbing side up, which will stop it from stretching. You just need to make sure that your stitching's really accurate and that this is definitely centered all the way down. I'm actually gonna do it with the accent side up because I just feel like I can get a neater finish. But what I'm gonna do, because I'm worried about a little bit of stretch, I'm gonna start from one end and work to the other, and I'm gonna do that on both sides. This way, if the, if the strap stretches, it's all gonna stretch in the same direction. If you sew down this side and then back up this side, you could end up with like a really wonky looking strap. So you want to do the same thing with both straps. Then grab one of your top pieces. So make sure this is the top edge where you've got your interfacing cut out. And you need to mark the top and the bottom edges. So you're gonna have this, these two marks here. Now I've actually just snipped into mine because my fabric isn't showing the marks very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the handle on the outside edge, so this side of my marks. So I've got my top mark there, my bottom mark down here. Okay, and you can fix that in place with some tape again if you want. I'm gonna use some clips instead because I feel like I've got enough tape going on in here. Now, when you're sewing double-sided tape, I definitely recommend using a Microtex needle or a super universal needle. Those two needles, they don't, uh, they have a different coating so the stickiness of the tape doesn't stick to the needle. So now that handle is in place, I'm gonna mark on the handle one and a quarter inches down from this top edge. Now I'm gonna sew up the handle and I'm gonna sew just to the edge of the handle accent. So hopefully my stitching will actually just kind of be hidden and lost in this groove here. So I'm gonna sew up here It'll be about an eighth of an inch seam allowance across the top and back down. Across this top bit, I'm actually just gonna back stitch and go back over it again, because I want to make sure that's extra secure and I like to have that extra stitching there. If like me, you forget to backstitch at the top and you want to do that, you can just go over it again afterwards. So I'm gonna grab the other side of my handle and I'm gonna place it again on the outside of the marks that I made. So I'm just gonna find those. I'm gonna do the same thing again. So up, across and back down. So I'm gonna make a mark for my one and a quarter inch line. Just a quick point that when you're attaching your handle, make sure that it's sitting straight at the top and that it's not kind of like twisted around when you're fitting it. So now that's on, we're gonna grab the exterior bottom piece and we want it to be like that. So we're just gonna flip them so they're right sides together and clip them together. Now we're gonna sew that bottom edge with a half inch seam allowance. And throughout this pattern, the standard seam allowance is a half inch. So 
So now you want to push that bottom piece down and you want the seams to be behind the bottom. So they're like that, they're behind the bottom edge. Okay, and we're, if you're using cotton, you can just press this with an iron, but because I'm using cork, I'm gonna use a seam roller to try and press that seam and get it to sit nice and flat. Now we're gonna top stitch this bottom piece through here, going through all the seams as we do. As you're approaching the straps, you may find a hump jumper useful to get over them without skipping any stitches. So that's your exterior panel finished. You need to do the exact same thing with the other side. So you're gonna have two identical exterior panels. If you have a handmade or logo tag, we do recommend fitting that now. We usually fit it around about here, but because I want it to contrast with my fabric, I'm gonna put it slightly higher up on this bag. That's step two done. Now we'll move on to the next step. Step three is the lining. For this step, you're gonna need your ring loop and the ring to go with it. You're also gonna need your two yarn feed pieces. So these need to be made of cork or vinyl because we're gonna have a raw edge on this. And with those, you'll have one 10 millimeter grommet or eyelet or whatever you want to call that. Then you're also gonna have your two pocket pieces and your two main lining pieces. So we're gonna start first of all with the ring loop. So what you wanna do is you want to bring it with the long edges right sides together, like that. And then we're just gonna sew this long open edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch really well on both ends. What we're gonna do now is turn this right side out. So this is gonna be a bit faffy, but hopefully without too much effort, you can get it done. You might find a turning tool helpful. As you get a little bit further on, you can kind of use the tool to push the other end through. Okay, once you've got that turned out, you want to put it so that the seam is in the center like this, and then just give that a good press with the iron. Now we're just gonna top stitch both long edges. Now we're gonna wrap this around the key ring and make sure you've got the seam on the inside where it won't be seen and just clip that together. And we're gonna baste that bottom edge. So set that aside for a moment and we're gonna get started on the yarn feed. So you should have two pieces of cork or vinyl. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue them together. So I'm gonna use some fabric glue and you just wanna make sure that the glue is as close as you can get it to the edges because you want these to stick together well on the edge. Okay, so you're gonna put them wrong sides together. And just allow those to set for a moment. Now they're glued together, what we wanna do is cut a curve on one end. So I'm gonna use a die cutter but you can just use a craft knife or something else like that if you prefer, if you don't have one of these. And if you need to, you can just trim them again around the edges just, just to make sure you've got a nice neat edge. Now, if you want to, you could use an edge coat to coat the edges of this. I'm not going to on mine. I'm going to just leave it raw because I feel like it's it's not, not too bad. It's quite a neat edge anyway. Next, I'm gonna mark where we want the grommet to go. So I want this to go three quarters of an inch in. And I want it to be centered. So I'm just gonna mark that there. And then I need to punch a hole for the grommet to go through. Okay, so I've got my hole punch, which you can see has cork in it from last time. I'm gonna place that centered over that mark. So just make sure that's definitely centered and make your hole. Okay, so before we actually fit 
the grommet, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch around here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Because we're sewing around a curve, I'm going to use a slightly smaller stitch length. It will make it easier to go around the curve. So the cork I'm using is a little bit sticky, which is making it hard to go around the curve, but there you go. Now I'm ready to fit my grommet. So I have this hand tool set and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that piece through and then you should have the tiny piece that goes on the back. Okay, so I'm going to put this onto my little mini anvil thing. Not sure what the appropriate term is really. And then what I'm going to do is use this side on the side that has that little ring. And I'm just going to give it a few good whacks. Okay, so that's all set. Now I'm going to set that aside and you can grab one of your pocket pieces. Now what we're going to do is bring the long edges up to meet each other so it's right sides together and clip that together. And I'm going to sew that edge with a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press this seam open. That will give it a neater finish. So you just want to press that open with the iron and then I'm going to turn it right side out. Okay, once that's turned out, you just want to press it so you've got like a nice neat bottom and top and you've got that seam on the bottom edge. Now what we're going to do is top stitch this top edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and also a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that's top stitch, you just want to repeat the whole process to create your second pocket. So set this aside for just a moment and grab your two main lining panels. Now on each of these, we're going to mark out the same squares on the bottom that we did with the exterior, and we're just gonna cut those out. So the measurements for that are in the pattern. When you're cutting these corners out, make sure that you're doing the bottom edge. These panels are wider than they are tall. You also want to draw a line across the bottom of each panel. So the measurements again are given in the pattern for where we want this line to be. This is gonna be where we place our pockets. As with all the marks in this pattern, make sure that you're using an erasable fabric pen. And if you're using it on a fabric you've not used it on before, just test it on an off cut to make sure that it disappears. Okay, once you've got that line drawn in place, you want to grab your pockets. And we'll just start with one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mark where the pocket dividers are going to be. So this pattern is designed to be a crochet project bag, which means it's gonna have loads of tiny pockets for all of the crochet hooks and that kind of thing. If you're using your bag for something different, you may want to place the pockets differently, make them bigger, um, do whatever suits your needs. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the measurements from the pattern and I'm going to mark lines for all of the pockets. Once all of your pockets are marked out, you can grab your main panel. And what we're gonna do is place this on top of that line that you drew and just clip it into place. So we need to sew this pocket on, but also sew all of the dividers. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either come down the side a little bit across the bottom and then go up and back down each line. So you'll get two stitch lines on each line. Or you can do what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna go down the side, along the bottom and up, and then I'm gonna do each line individually just once, so I'm gonna backstitch well at the top and bottom. If you're making this as a crochet project bag, like it is in the pattern, it's important to just mark this panel as the back panel. So I'm just gonna put a B on there. Um, that's gonna be important because of where the yarn feed is. So what you now need to do is on this same panel, you're gonna measure down and mark, all these measurements are in the pattern, and you're gonna put your 
ring loop on that mark. So I'm going to put it directly below the mark and just clip it in place. We're also going to put the yarn feed on. So again, in the pattern, it has a measurement. I'm going to put that right below the mark I've made and clip that in place. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and baste both of those in place. So set that aside for a moment and grab your other pocket piece. Just like we did with the other piece, we're going to mark the pockets. These are different to the first piece, so make sure you check the pattern for where your markings need to be. Once those are marked, grab your remaining main lining panel and we're going to place that pocket on top again. So just place it on the line that you drew and clip it in place. As we did with the other one, we're going to sew the sides, the bottom and each line. So you can do that whichever method you prefer. And that is your lining done. So now we can move on to the next step. Step four is the zip and construction. So for this step, I'm gonna start with my zip. I've marked it three quarters of an inch in on each side. I've done that on both ends. So I'm gonna start by separating the zip on one end. Then what I'm gonna do is just pinch where one of these marks is. So you're gonna pinch the tape on each side to create a fold on the mark and you're going to end up with this 90 degree turn in your zip. So then I just need to fix that in place. Now I find this easiest using a old fashioned hand needle. You can do this on the sewing machine if you prefer, but we're basically just going to hold this in place. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, you're just going to pinch it on either side. So you're kind of pinching it on that mark and it's going to create a 90 degree fold. So it's going to match the other side. And now I'm just going to sew that in place too. So now we're going to grab the exterior front panel. So your panels are the same, but if you've got a logo badge on yours, then you'll have a front. And what we want to do is mark it. So we're going to mark it on the top edge, three quarters of an inch in from the left, one and a half inches in from the right. Now that's marked, we're going to separate this zip. And you need to find the one that when it's right side down, so the teeth are down, it's on the left with this turned section. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So only one side of your zip will fit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the turned teeth right here up against the mark. So you need to find your mark and you're gonna put the turned teeth right on the mark. And then you just need to clip the rest of this zip to the top edge. As you're going, you'll want to bring this handle down so it's not gonna be in the way. Okay, so it's clipped all the way along until you reach the mark over here. So this is the one and a half inch mark. And then what you want to do is fold the zip so it's got a 90 degree angle like this. So find your one and a half inch mark and you want the fold to be right on that mark. Now this is important because you need the two sides to match for a really neat result. Okay, so I'm just clipping it down here to keep it out of the way. Now I'm gonna take that over to the sewing machine and baste it in place. Now that's basted on, we want to grab the front lining panel. So this is the one without the extras on. What we're gonna do is place it right sides together with the exterior and then clip it along the top edge. Now we're gonna sew that top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. 
While you're doing this, make sure that your zip is still hanging down at the 90 degree angle that we had before. Okay, so now those are sewn together. What we're gonna do is give it a really good press. So I'm gonna take it over to the iron and give it a good press with the lining away from the zip and also with the exterior away from the zip. So you now want your zip end to be going up. It should naturally go up that way. So just give it a good press with the iron. So set that aside and grab your exterior back panel. Now we're gonna mark the top edges like we did on the other panel. But for this one, the measurements are swapped over. So we're marking it one and a half inches in on this edge and three quarters of an inch in from this edge on the right. So grab the remaining piece of zip and you're gonna place it right sides together. So the zip teeth are right sides together with the top of the bag. And we're gonna match the turned teeth up to the three quarter inch mark. So that's exactly like we did on the other side. The turned teeth are on the three quarter inch mark. And then we're gonna clip it in place along this top edge. When you reach this one and a half inch mark, we're gonna do the same thing as before and fold the zip at a 90 degree angle. So you wanna do that on the mark. And then you can just clip the zip further down so that it doesn't move around. Now we're gonna to baste to this entire top edge. Now grab your lining back panel. So that's the one with the yarn feed and the ring. You're gonna place it right sides together with that exterior back panel and clip the top edges together. And we're gonna sew that together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, I'm gonna do the same as I did on the other side. I'm gonna press this with an iron to push it away from the zip and press the exterior too. All of this pressing, it can be a little bit annoying, but it really does make a difference to the finished seams. So we're gonna open this up so that the lining and exterior are separate. And what you wanna do is just make sure that all your seams are pointing toward the exterior. So they're behind the exterior. Then grab your back panels and we're gonna place it so they're exterior sides together and lining sides together. And again, we want the seams to be going toward the exterior. So we're gonna clip these together, but the first thing that you really wanna watch out for is the side seams. So clip those first, make sure they match perfectly. This is gonna make a big difference to how neat the bag looks when it's finished. So match up those seams and clip those in place first. Do the same on the other side. Your zips should be pointing toward the lining. Now, if you're working on the horizontal version like me, you also wanna make sure that the seams down here match up because that is gonna make a difference to how neat it looks too. So you can clip those together next. And then we're gonna clip the rest of the bag together, but you don't need to do the bottom. When you're clipping the lining together, make sure that your bits and pieces are all inside. You don't wanna get those caught in the seam. Now that's all clipped, we're just gonna sew the long edge here and the long edge on the other side. We're gonna use half an inch seam allowance. We're not sewing anything else except for these.
So before I go any further, I'm gonna press these side seams open. So if you've got an ironing board, you can stick this on the end of the ironing board and we're just gonna press it open all along that seam on both sides. Once those seams are pressed, we're gonna turn the bag right side out, which is why we've left the bottom open. And we want to turn the bags to how it's gonna be when it's finished. So you're going to go ahead and put the lining inside the exterior. And we're going to top stitch the bag now, but again, first of all, I'm going to give it a good press, particularly around this top seam and watch out for these bits here. That's a really good place to press to make sure that the lining isn't going to show on the outside of the bag. So I'm going to press that with the iron and then I'm going to take it over to the machine and top stitch all the way around. This is going to be easier because the bottom's open. So particularly if you have like an arm machine, you can stick the arm in. It's going to be really easy to top stitch. But the bag is a really good size. So even if you have a flatbed machine, you can move the rest of the bag out of the way and top stitch it quite easily. When you're top stitching, make sure that the zip tails are still at the 90 degree angle pointing up away from the bag. When you need to stop and readjust the bag, just leave your needle in when you do so and that way you won't lose your place. So now we're gonna turn the bag inside out again. Okay, I'm going to match up the bottoms of the exterior and clip them together. I'm going to sew that bottom edge with half an inch seam allowance. Now we need to box the corners. So what we're going to do is grab one of the corners and you want to make sure that the seam is open on the side and the seam is open on the base. And you're going to bring those seams together so that they match up. And you can see the rest of it should just sort of fit together. So we're gonna clip that all the way along. Add a couple of clips further down just to make it nice and easy when you get to the machine. And we're gonna sew that with a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the other box corner on the exterior. Okay, so your base of the exterior should now look like this with both of those corners sewn. Don't trim these seams because we're gonna need them in a minute. So what we're now gonna do is put the lining right sides together, line it up and clip them together. Okay, so you wanna leave yourself a nice big turning gap to turn the bag out. So I go with about eight inches or something like that. Um, if you are using heavier fabrics, possibly slightly bigger. So I'm just gonna mark that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sew from the end just up to where I've marked on each side and make sure that you backstitch really well. Now we're gonna sew this with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's just gonna make the lining a little bit smaller and it's gonna result in a neater finish at the end. Okay, so you've got your nice big turning gap. So what we're gonna do before we turn it out is close these corners. So it's exactly the same as with the exterior. We're gonna push these seams open and bring the side seam to match the base seam and just clip them together. So clip the rest of that box corner together. Now you might be thinking that this box corner isn't gonna be absolutely perfect because we used half an inch seam allowance on the side and five eighths on the bottom. That is true, but you really are not gonna notice the difference and it's just not gonna be a problem. So don't worry about that. 
What we're going to do here, we're going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance. You're going to do the same thing with the other box corner on the lining. So to get an ultra neat lining, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press the lining between each of the box seams. So I'm going to press it like that and the same on this side. We're almost there. I promise you'll get to turn your bag out soon. I'm just going to have one last step for the lining to be really neat and tight. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this base lining together with this exterior base. So what we want to do is bring them so that this seam on the base is together with the seam on the lining. Okay, it's going to feel a little bit strange. And we're going to clip the box corners together and just hold those together. Okay, so you're bringing the base seams together like that, so they're facing each other, and then you're clipping the box corners together. Okay, so it's going to look like a bit of a mess. You're going to have kind of like a round roll and you can actually stick your arm all the way through. So this is just like the bases that we've put together like this. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to sew through these box corners. So I recommend doing this with the exterior side up um, just because you just want to get a really neat finish and you don't want to go past your existing stitching. So for me, the exterior like up on the machine is easier. What you're going to do is sew with about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance because you, you don't want to overlap your original seam here. So we're going to sew through the exterior and lining, sew them together. I'm going to use about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do that on both sides. This step requires sewing through a lot of layers. So if your sewing machine can't handle it, you can skip this step. All we're doing here is sewing the lining into the exterior to get a really neat finish. Okay, so you're now going to need to turn your bag out so you can find that gap still in the lining. It's going to feel a little bit more awkward than usual because the lining is sewn into the exterior, but it's absolutely doable. So you're just going to push the whole bag out through that gap. Okay, so before I turn it, like with the exterior sides out, I'm going to sew the bottom close. So the turning gap, you have two options for this turning gap. So your first option is to hand stitch this bag closed. So hopefully you can see inside this, it is a really neat finish. It's like a hidden ladder stitch. I'm not going to show that in this video, but I'm going to link a video on how to do that. That's if you know you've got patience and you want your lining to look really neat. The second option is to machine stitch it closed. So hopefully you can see that there's like a little ridge in the bottom of this bag. This has been machine stitched. So this is much quicker, but it's gonna leave you with a little ridge inside. Now, if you're planning on just using your bag, it's gonna have stuff in it you'll never see 
that bottom ridge. But if you want a really neat lining, you can use the first option. So for this particular bag, I am going to machine stitch it. So what I'm gonna do is fold the edges of the turning gap in so that they match the bit that we sewed up to. So let's see if we can get started on this end. So each side should kind of be folded in by about half an inch. You can press this with the iron if you want, it can make it a little bit easier. And I'm gonna clip that together. Now that's clipped, I'm gonna take it over to the machine. I'm gonna sew that with a really small seam allowance. So probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe less. Okay, so let's get this turned out. Make sure that you push these corners out really well. And your lining should be sitting pretty neat in there since we sewed it in. Now, if you are creating the vertical version of this pattern, you will need to fit your handles now. Instructions for doing so are included in the pattern. If not, now's just a really good time to give your bag a press. Okay, we're almost there. We're going to go ahead and fit the zip pull now. Now, the reason we made the marks earlier on the zip tape was to make it easier for this step. Although one of mine has disappeared because of the heat. So what we wanna do, you wanna make sure that your zips are both sort of pointing the same way and you should be able to see your marks and match them up. Now, because one of mine's disappeared, that's no good. So what I'm gonna do is just go for it. So we're gonna put the zip on one end first, just a little bit, then pop the other end in. Now you want them to be going in equally. That is the trick. And you wanna put it on a flat surface. So. Put your fingers on the outside of the tape. Give the pull a little tug. Should go on quite easily. If it doesn't go on easily, usually it's just because of the quality of the zip pull. Okay, so pull it all the way on and just check that your teeth are even. Okay, mine's not even. Mine's got a few more teeth on this side than it does on that side. So I'm gonna whip it off. I'm gonna make sure that this side goes in a little bit further on my next try. So just keep doing this until you get it right. Okay, so don't worry about the little twist here in your zip. That's because once it goes down into the bag, it will look perfect, which is how it's supposed to be. Okay, so if you're using nylon zip like me, I find that lighting the edge quickly really helps to stop it from fraying. So I am gonna show you how to fit a hardware zip end because in the pattern, it shows instructions for a fabric one. So whichever way, that way you're covered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the end in slightly like that. Then I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Fold it twice. Okay, so my zip is just as wide as the teeth. Then you can add a little bit of glue inside your zip end if you want to, but I'm not going to on this occasion. I'm just gonna slip that on and push it all the way in as far as it will go. Then I've got a nice sharp awl, which I'm gonna use. I'm gonna poke through the hole where the screw's gonna go. Just make room for the screw, which I'm then gonna pop in there. Okay, once that's in, that is your zip end fitted. So you can now tuck your zip into the end of the bag. So there's our finished bag. I must admit, I prefer the horizontal design because I love these accents on straps. They just look so good. So I think that turned out really well. Thank you so much for joining me. 
Um, if you want to keep an eye out for our next pattern, our next sewing pattern is going to be something slightly different. Here we go. It is going to be a duffel bag. So this is actually really quick to make, really quite straightforward, quite simple. The idea behind this bag is that it's the perfect size to take for your personal luggage on a plane. So not a carry-on, but a personal luggage. A lot of the uh, airlines now, that's the only bag you can take for free. So we wanted to maximize the space. This pattern's also gonna have an option for you to adjust it to exactly the size requirements you need. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. This one's got a lovely funky interior. Hopefully you can see that. Join us for this one soon. This will be coming out in June, 2023. And uh, we hope to see you then. Bye.